I'm looking at the stocks right now. I have never seen such depressing. But I think up to this point, the topic that I'm going to talk about today worries me the most. And I've never been so much more careful in thinking about what to say in my own video. That's because this is a very controversial topic. The trade war between Korea and Japan. First of all, when there's Korea and Japan in one title, that's going to be the most controversial Alright then, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, but you guys already know that I'm a Korean and that shouldn't surprise any of you if you're my subscriber. And I tell you this because I want to make sure that... Uh, I just want to give you guys a picture of what's going on. I know that I've mentioned this topic before in a previous video where I told you guys about why certain K-Nets are suddenly mad at Japanese K-pop stars. But honestly, at the time, the situation wasn't this severe. So I'm going to basically recap what I said in that video and give you guys an update on what has happened after that and why we think the entire situation is more severe than it was back then. So the start of this entire situation can be summarized with this picture. So recapping what I said in my previous video, Japan decides to stop exporting three items to Korea. See? Stop exporting. The first item is fluorine polyimide. Second is photoresist. Third is etching gas. Now you guys might be curious on what these are, but these are very important items to semiconductor companies and like I mentioned before the semiconductor industry is very 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 important to South Korea's economy and Japan probably knows this very well so then why why did Japan suddenly decide to not export these items to Korea well according to the Japanese government the decision was made under two circumstances one, in 2018, the victims of forced labor by the Japanese company Mitsubishi during the Second World War gathered up and filed for a lawsuit against the company. The Korean court ended up taking the victim's sides and asked the Japanese company to financially reward these victims who were used in forced labor. And this basically triggered everything because after that ruling, the foreign minister of Japan, Konotaro, came out and said that this was a ruling that they could never agree to. Now, on my last video, I remember a specific comment where one of you said something like, like this. Koreans think they are the only ones who have been colonized and they think they are the only ones who have been committed war crimes against and they can't get over their history. But I think the situation is much more confusing because in 2016 or so, the Chinese court ruled against the Japanese company as well. And in that case, the Japanese company Mitsubishi promised to pay the victims. Same thing in America where the representatives of Mitsubishi met up with the previous forced labor American victims and apologized to them publicly. Yes, so going back to the topic, this was the first reason the Japanese government said that the Korean government with this specific ruling has ruined the trust and relationship between the two countries. Reason number two was that when they send these items to South Korea, there's a risk of these items going into North Korea. So this is when the boycott movement in Korea started getting really big. You probably saw videos of people boycotting Japanese items and doing an anti-Japan protest in the streets of Seoul. So the boycott movement was basically this. You don't buy Japanese goods and you don't go to Japan. And I've seen a similar movement develop in Japan where there was a boycott Korea movement and people were boycotting traveling to Korea or buying Korean goods but I don't know how big that certain movement got but I am sure and I can tell you for a fact that the boycott Japan movement is one of the biggest boycott movements that I've seen just in my lifetime and Japanese brands like Uniqlo have started shutting down one of their major and biggest stores in Korea which kind of proves that this boycott movement is getting really big so obviously the tensions in Japan and Korea are rising not just the government but even between the citizens. When I ask my cousins and friends who live in Japan, they see more racist protests and racist people on the streets than they have ever seen before. So as the tensions rise, Japan starts talking about removing Korea from its whitelist. 
What? So for those of you who don't know what a whitelist is, whitelist is basically a list of people or groups that you find acceptable or trustworthy and is used by governments all around the world to label certain countries that are safe to freely trade with. And obviously Japan is on Korea's whitelist and Korea is on Japan's whitelist. So as the tensions rise and this removing Korea from the whitelist keeps getting mentioned, the foreign ministers of both countries meet up for a conference. Uh, the conference is said to have taken about 45 minutes in which they settled nothing on friday of august 2nd when i was in Jeonju, japan proceeds with its plan and removes korea from its whitelist on the same day the president of south korea moon jae-in makes a public announcement saying that japan has crossed the line that they should never have and that they're jeopardizing the relationship and trust that the two countries have built for the last few decades but what's important is that the blue house has announced that they will be removing japan from its whitelist as well and i know with a lot of economic problems a lot of people like to view it as a two-dimensional problem but it's never as simple as that especially in these high-tech industries that korea and japan are trying to fight over a lot of the companies are interdependent with each other and that's not to say just korean and japanese companies if the japanese companies don't provide the korean companies with necessary ingredients the korean companies can no longer produce its memory chips or other semiconductor goods that are then imported by american chinese and japanese firms which are then used to make a final product like this so these companies need each other. They can't just produce everything by itself. That's crazy talk. So basically what this means is that what the experts are saying about this situation is true. If Korea and Japan continues its economic pride war, an economic pride war is exactly what I would call this situation. There's going to be dire consequences to both of their economies the longer this economic pride war lasts. And I mean, it's already happening. Like I showed you in my intro video, the stock market index of both countries are falling. And that's really no good because people end up losing money and it's never a happy country when people start losing money. So this is as far as the economic trade war has developed since I made my last video and kind of where it's at right now. Of course, we'll have to wait more and see what happens in the future. But with the tensions between the citizens and the governments being super high, I don't think the situation is going to get better anytime soon. Before I end this video though, I want to address some of the comments that I was getting on my last video. So not surprisingly, after I uploaded that video, which I thought was pretty neutral, I got some very toxic and negative feedback from Japanese and Korean viewers. And sometimes people who are completely unrelated with both countries have stepped forward and sent me negative messages as well. I mean, I don't care about the negative messages. I think the negative feedback doesn't hurt my feelings. But let me address something that I've been asked. Uh, the most. First of all, I'm going to disclaim all the racist, super toxic comments that I got from the Japanese viewers because, you know, racism is never the answer and your racist comments don't deserve my time. A lot of the concerns and questions I was getting from the Korean viewers or people from other backgrounds who thought I wasn't supporting Korea enough as a Korean. Don't worry because the reason I take a neutral stance in my video is because I want to give you guys, the international audience, a clear view of what's going on and not to persuade you into thinking Japan is bad or Korea is bad. That's not where I stand and that's not what my channel is really about. And my channel is a community of international viewers from all around the world and I think I have a responsibility as an owner of this channel to share neutral information information. On a personal level, of course, I want Korea to be more prosperous than it is right now and I want the citizens of Korea to be happy and I'm very proud of the country that I'm from and that I live in and I'm confident to say that I would live nowhere else than here. But having that said, I wish the same for the citizens of Japan. I want citizens of Japan to be happy and I want Japan to be a more prosperous country in the future as well and I think that means we have to disregard the racist feelings that we still might have against each other and forget about our long, confusing, intermixed history and move on and look for a more prosperous future together as economic and military partners is this is this a little bit too much for a youtuber do i sound too much like a representative of un or something is but anyways guys that was the trade war between korea and japan as far as it happened till today if you found this interesting or i answered some of your questions like this video and subscribe to my channel for more interesting information on korea and k-pop news until then see you next time I'm sweating like crazy.